Hello, this is The Radical Coach and this vlog is about discard, battles, war with a narcissist. And narcissism comes in different levels of hardness. There are narcissists that are more than boastful, they're shallow, needy, jealous and have showy friends and colleagues and family members. But aside from being somewhat draining and hard to like on any deep or meaningful sense, they can be relatively harmless, although they still cause quite a bit of a nuisance. But as we move along the spectrum and the negative traits are adding up, you enter into the territory of the malignant narcissist who will be extremely destructive with an antisocial behaviour issue, aggression and cruelty. They're often overwhelming characters, you probably know the type, and they're always ready to raise hostility levels in everyone else around them, because they undermine families and organisations in which they're involved in, and they brutalise people. So from my experiences with my clients, every narcissist can be slightly different, but when they're stalking and causing you personal harm, think more malignant for this vlog and I'm going to do a separate um, YouTube vlog on just the malignant narcissist for you to listen to if you want more details on that if that's where you're at. So narcissists often discard and dump you before a major event so say like a birthday or a major holiday or you shared something very personal which is always dangerous for you. You could be down on your luck, you could be grieving the loss of a loved one, or you might have been diagnosed with a serious illness, so you, it's when you're at your low point. And the narcissist is so devious that they will purposely plan the timing of the breakup to occur during the times when you feel distressed, when you feel really vulnerable. And they fully expect you to plead and promise to change. They want you to change. Even though you've done so much to try and please them. And then they unexpectedly break things off with you. And you think, oh my God, I can't understand what, what just happened. But this is calculated, okay? It establishes their superiority and dominate, dominance over you. They love to create battles with you. So they can be at war with you. And they use all different types of behaviours to pick their battles with you, then discard or dump you. And really, you're being taught a lesson in obedience. Keep you in line. And keep them in control of you. And don't think during discard and dumping times they're far away. They could be in the next street ready to follow you or they could be sitting in their car just watching you watching your front door to see who comes in and who go, comes out or they could be two carriages away from you on the train they'll definitely be watching your activity on social media like someone from the FBI and they may be able to have hacked into your computer or phone and install spyware just be aware of that they might obtain a fake IP address or fake accounts to cyber bully you on different social media platforms without it being traced. They can threaten you anonymously through different email addresses. This is all the battles. They can send you text messages that aren't very nice. But to someone outside listening, it will be a bit confusing. So they can evade suspicion from the law enforcement. And they've been known to use various phone apps to mask their numbers and use multiple numbers to harass you all day long or bombard you with excessive numbers of messages per day. I had one client that I think she got 150 messages per day. And it's tiring, you know, blocking all these messages while a new number pops up. So it's a situation that often doesn't go away. And they're probably making a special note of any friend 
that spends too much time with you, who's trying to support you or make you feel stronger. That friendship that you've got will be another battle about your so-called friends. They're very predatory. They have a severe sense of entitlement and they don't have any empathy. So they don't monitor how wounded you are. It's of no interest to them. And they won't allow someone else to attack you because attack you, they want the sole monopoly to torture you whenever they want a, a battle fix. Does this sound familiar to you so far? A narcissist cannot love you. Their personality doesn't allow for love. It only allows for battles, war, pain, chaos, and to hurt you in any way they can. They're at war with you in every situation. They need a war to gain a win-win battle over you. You must be punished with emotional blunt weapons they yield at you like an axe. And all the time they've been carefully listening to you and what you've said about yourself. And they've stored all your vulnerable weaknesses away for a rainy battle day and your honesty gives them more power over you. So remember, every time you give a little detail or you divulge something about yourself, that will be turned against you to create war. Your innocent pillow talks to the narcissist is gonna use it against you like a gun to shoot you down. They have bubbling amounts of anger long before they met you and probably have a history of broken relationships strewn all over the place that maybe you don't know about. But for now, you're their victim interest. You're a target for all that aggression that's bubbling away. They want revenge and destruction from you. They want war with you, so there'll never be any peace. Every discussion will be turned into an argument where you lose. Your caring, loving personality makes them feel sick to their stomach. Your peace infuriates them. Your calmness drives them to distraction. Your contentment makes them feel furious because they think pain, battles, destruction and war. And this is the same false narcissistic Prince Charming who cleverly seduced you. All these lies and acting skills bound you closer to him. His charisma occupied your mind so quickly, you submitted yourself within moments. And all the while, he was drawing up his battle plans to destroy you. They use your love to hurt you. They use your love as a blunt weapon to wound you. They are emotional vampires and have no problem destroying you to get their needs met. They really don't care. They manipulate you and they starve you of attention. So it's like you get a war starts raging inside you because you're desperate for attention, the right kind of attention. And when they don't give you that attention, they slowly destroy you from the outside while you slowly destroy yourself from the inside out. War gives them the fuel to conquer and overrun you and their battles devalue you. So let's really get radical and take a look at their battle plan or plans. There'll always be a first emotional battle. So we'll call it round one. 
So you get a battle, a subsequent war will start, and then you'll be discarded and dumped for the first time. They won't give you a reason for the war and the dumping. They might be too busy charging around to find someone new. Well, you're left destroyed. But never forget this. Whatever they're doing, they might be lying to somebody else, hooking somebody else in. They're still keeping a watchful eye on you at the same time. You're left devastated, deeply wounded, not having a scooby-doo what you did wrong. Because you've seen no battle plan with your name on it, have you? Because you've been dumped to wound and manipulate you, to feel weak and immobilised. And when your life has spun into utter despair, they know that this will bind you even closer to them than before. They have increased their control over you. Hmm. All they need to do is put on the fake, fake Prince Charming costume, come galloping along on their white charger, and you'll open the drawbridge for them whenever they want. Because you're in so much terrible emotional pain. And you feel you're the only one that can stop that pain, so you let them back in. You let them back into your life. But they were the ones that caused all the pain in the first place, by war and dumping you. And then you let them hurt you all over again when they hoover you back in. So hoovering is like sucking the life out of you. It's named after the vacuum cleaner. I think it's quite a, a good term actually. And you can think of yourself being hoovered as you're permanently being on the rebound. They use the hoover manoeuvre after they've dumped you and after a period of silence. The narcissist will hoover you until they no longer need you. Then they'll dump you again with no thought of how you will be affected because they have to be win-win in every situation. And hoovering uses despicable tactics. You haven't spoken to them, you've had the silent treatment, you've been dumped and then they sweet talk you with humble behavior, knowing your weak spots to reopen talks with you. Oh, and when they promise to change their ways, doesn't that sound amazing? It's all lies. So they can hoover you through voicemail, text messages, emails. How are you? I can't stop thinking about you. Look, I know things didn't work out, but you really mean so much to me. I just want you to know that. Lies. Hi, what's going on? Hope you're having a good birthday. I wish I could be there. I know you hate me, but please tell Hannah that I wish her a happy birthday and I'm sorry I can't be there. Hey, there's a vegetarian cooking class this weekend. Do you want to go? And they didn't give a fly about you being a vegetarian before. More lies. I think I might have cancer. Can you talk? Lies. What does a heart attack feel like? My left arm really hurts. Lies. I can't handle all this anymore. I'm going to kill myself. Lies. It's despicable, isn't it? And you've tried to keep away from them, but one phone call or a sweet text message hooks you back into their battlefield. Who says that narcissists can't be evil geniuses? Prince Charming is back in full battle dress, armed and loaded, with psychological weapons to hook you back in to inflict more pain on you. Maybe in all your suffering you believe that Prince Charming can't live without you. Mmm, he can. But you want him back, warts and all. Big mistake. When they hear your heart pounding, the lies really begin to flow. 
they'll tell you that they're just about to find a therapist and get help. Mm, more lies. But you won't be able to resist them. Do you honestly believe therapy is going to permanently bring out Prince Charming? Mm -mm. Prince Charming is an act. He's not real now, not then, not ever. But you can't help yourself. So you surrender so fast because you want to believe the lies. Because you don't believe they are lies. And you just set yourself up for more emotional battles and dumping. And don't ever expect a genuine sorry because that will be more lies. And you know you should never have answered the phone or let them contact you. You know that. And when you do, Prince Charming's seduction means to destroy you again. So you have two choices. And I'm not simplifying this because this is very difficult. But you avoid the emotional battle altogether by keeping away from them so you don't get dumped again and end up on the rebound again. Or you prepare yourself and try and, you know, put some boundaries in and have some chance of victory. And hopefully, you know, you'll get the, the aha moment as you see the patterns with the narcissist. You get dumped and you don't know why, they hoover you back. You get dumped and you don't know why, they hoover you back. You get dumped and you don't know why, they hoover you back. You get dumped and you don't know why. The hoover brings you back into the abusive cycle for more war. Discard, discard, discard and so it goes on. And one of the reasons they discard and dump you is because their egos have a lot of narcissistic issues. You know, you want a compromise in your relationships. You want more cooperation. You want empathy, honesty and healthy boundaries. Mm. Well, they're not going to engage in any of them. They want to just discard you because it causes you so much pain. And this might sound really shocking to you because you can't understand how someone you feel so much in love with could throw it all away. But they haven't stopped loving you because they never loved you in the first place. It's not how it works. They need a victim. They need someone to attack. That's what they're plotting for. And when you've been dumped, they're hoping you'll send them a message and see if you reply. And you say to yourself, mm, is it worth one quick call, a quick chat? It won't do any harm, will it? A kiss can't hurt anyone. Because I believe they loved me once, didn't they? And I'll be stronger this time. No, you won't. And they never loved you. This is not love. And you might have to fight these battles many times before securing the win. If you ever feel like you, you win in a situation like this. When your heart's breaking. And eventually, when their last hoovering manoeuvre fails. It still doesn't mean that you've stopped loving them. You could still be really hurting. But once you can use your critical thinking with logical thoughts. You can start analysing what's been going on. And from that moment, you're beginning to take back your power. They lord it over you. The more you read, the more you understand, and you apply logic, the tide is turning for you. And listening to vlogs like this prevents your emotions from swamping you. It's not going to be the answer. You know, you need to be coached. But this is you trying to help yourself for the moment. Because your knowledge will begin to increase. It'll increase because you gain more. You're learning more. 
you're learning about how you've been played and manipulated with the discard and battle nonsense. And when you've been dumped and discarded, you must be aware of the three battles you'll have to face. And only then will you get the chance to walk freely away from them. So like I said before, the first emotional battle, which you lose until you learn not to fight it. Okay. Then there'll be a second battle where you get dumped and you don't know why. They hoover you back. You get dumped and you don't know why. They hoover you back. You get dumped and you don't know why. They hoover you back. Discard, discard, discard. And on and on it goes. So the second fight must be fought many times until hard logic takes place. And the first and second battles, you will be overwhelmed. But the third and final battle, your emotions have been switched off or you're getting there and you know you don't feel so overwhelmed. Fear hasn't got a grip on your stomach. You can outrun it and have the upper hand because you've got more choices available to you now with knowledge. Your critical thinking has increased and you've gained a greater control of your own emotions and, you know, better decisions. And when you've got that far, you're living in a safer place and you can slowly build a small social life with people you can trust. At the third stage. But even in that third stage, the narcissist may turn up and knock on your door and you will feel a grip of all those emotions. But you have a greater control and you're better equipped to make rational decisions which suit you. You feel ready to meet new people and friendships. Even finding someone you can be romantically involved with. But all the while watching to see if the narcissist appears from around the corner in a crowd rushing forward to hurl ins insults at you. But on the third battle, the third stage, you'll be more armed to protect yourself. You'll refuse to argue with them as before. You still will be, you know, exposed to be ambushed and approached at any time. You can't lock yourself away, but your knowledge will be your power. You've increased your understanding of their behavior as well as your own. And your ongoing recovery refuses to engage with them. So you make sure you can go to safer ground. And in your own recovery from a narcissist, it really is great to establish a place where everyone is known to you and you're known to them. You don't want to be isolated. That's what they want. But when you surround yourself with people that know you, it does reduce the risk of the narcissist appearing out of nowhere and keeps you safe. And in the third and final battle, Prince Charming wants to drag you back to a place where they were more successful in hurting you. And it might even weaken you in a moment. But you know now how to turn your back on Prince Charming and see him for the liar he is. And he'll wait around for weeks, months, even years. Seemingly content to leave you alone. Hmm for the time being, but be prepared that out of nowhere, if you let your guard down and stop thinking about him, he'll be by your side, seeking to worm his way in around you once again. But in the third, final battle with knowledge and help, you'll see the narcissist coming. You'll begin to ignore the narcissist's manipulation because you've built yourself a barrier and a safe place to go to and you can firmly say no to them. That gives you much more control. 
and they'll have no choice but to sulk away and lick their wounds and regroup. Although, you know, there remains a risk of you going back to Prince Charming, but it's far less than in the first two sets of battles. You've become tougher. <clears throat> you can stand tall for the first time. You can deal with the fallout from being dumped. You know what will happen. You know what to expect. Your only question will be how long will this final, final battle last? However, for you to be near this stage, I would strongly advise radical coaching or some sort of professional help for you to gain all the support and knowledge you need. The narcissist won't leave you alone when you walk away. Both mentally and physically, he'll try and remain in your life. So you need all the tricks and techniques available to prevent him from wheedling his way back into your life. You've got to work hard on your boundaries because depending on what type of narcissist you're dealing with, for you to say no, even politely, and set boundaries is like setting off an atomic bomb in the narcissist's eyes. Mm, they don't like the no word. It sends them into a frightening rage as they realise they can no longer control you and that you're actively resisting their hoovering attempts. Even if you're not verbally expressing anything and you say no firmly through your actions, your silence could, you know, make them very, very angry. And you will face a blast of mental manipulation, but you'll be more aware of it. The narcissist believes the centre of the universe revolves around them. They come first and they're always right. And they are emotionally barren. And they do lack the same sort of empathy that we have. And they don't consider the impact of their actions they have on other people. They just don't. And they're often deeply unhappy individuals and they just want to project their nasty feelings onto other people. And they are a master of fakery and turn on the charm at the drop of a hat and tell you a lie without blinking an eye. And you may still be in love with him, which makes it very difficult for you and hurts your own well-being. But if you can put distance between you and the narcissist, it's the right thing to do. So in an ideal world, of course, don't take his calls, see him or have contact with him. But I know that that's not always easy. You know, you might have to maintain contact with him because you've got children. Could be somebody at work or somebody in the family. But do this on your terms. Set the time, place and length of the con contact. And do you know what? Any form of raised voices, derogatory marks, remarks, or belittling, end it. I've got to go now. And they might be in your life, but they don't have to be in your head. Directly you're abused, you have to go. And there is a method, it's not easy to do, but it's called the grey rock method. And it will require practice, trust me. <laughs> And you won't get it right first time. Like anything, when you use it consistently, it will put a distance between you and them. The grey rock. So let's think of it like Prince Charming is an actor who wears many masks and plays many roles in their own personal pantomime, where the joke's always on you. And in that pantomime that they create, full of lies, is drama, romance, comedy, action, thriller, and horror. <laughs> the horror is they play the scary monster and you're their terrified victim. But hopefully by this stage, you know, you're at the third stage. You know this stuff. 
and all the scenes in their pantomime must be interesting and appealing. And you know, they, they've got the starring star role, haven't they? But when you adopt the grey rock method, you can get yourself written out of the series altogether. Because your character must not give anything emotionally away and keep your conversations as boring as you can. You just become drab, humdrum, tedious and uninteresting as possible. And narcissists can't bear boring, so they'll be forced to look elsewhere for their entertainment because you're reducing your worth in their eyes. But you must remain boring and rock-like. You can't get blood from a stone. You are the stone. You are the rock. And the blood is any behaviour that provides the narcissist with the supply they crave. And if you don't talk to them, you stay in the car when you drop the kids off. You sit at the other end of the table for family meals. You ask to move your desk away from them at work. And you avoid interacting with them as much as possible. This is good. And don't make a big deal out of it. Or tell them what you're doing because that will just give them ammunition. Or just hear it. And when you do have to talk to them, if you do, stick to tedious subjects like the weather. If they ask you questions, give short, uninspiring answers that can't possibly lead to further conversation. They ask you, how are you? And you say, fine, thanks. They ask, what did you do at the weekend? And you say, I did my laundry and mowed the lawn. And if they respond with, you've become boring, just nod and smile in agreement. Keep to yes and no answers. But sometimes you won't be able to answer it like that. There might be something come up where you, you want to give an opinion, but you could go, hmm, maybe, we'll see. Don't respond. If you want to comment, just do, hmm. That stops you saying something, maybe, or we'll see. Never talk about your personal life, even the smallest detail. Never tell them how well you're doing, as much as you might want to rub their noses in it. Don't ask them questions, even if it seems like harmless small talk. Do not get into debates with them, stick to the facts and avoid any mention of the past at all costs. You know how they love to bring the past up to beat you with. Yeah, they love the past and what you've done wrong and what you didn't say and what you didn't do. Mm -mm. The grey rock method is not easy, but it's effective. Starve them of all drama they feed off. And even look like a grey rock, if you must to, when you have dealings with them. I know you might not want to, but it's, so, it's such a good idea to be as plain as possible when you see them. And if they com comment on how bad you look, let it go in one ear and out the other. Change your privacy settings to restrict what they can see. And use a very plain profile picture. It's boring when they try and snoop. Don't let them see anything that makes them think that you're doing well for yourself, because they don't like that. Never tell them about this approach, as I said, but they might shout and they might act out in a threatening way, but you've got to remain cool and calm and composed in the face of their rage. That's why this needs practice. And maybe you can role play it with some friends and we do that when we, we and I'm with my co coaching clients, we role play situations or I do the grey rock for them till they get it. Because they're very manipulative and they could use your children, involve your children and your friends and your families to turn against you. And always, I can't stress this enough, 
always put your safety and the safety of those you care about first. If the threats seem really genuine, seek the protection and guidance of the police, the courts and social authorities. Don't let that go if you think they're going to be violent. You need help. Or other times when you know the threats are nothing but words, stand your ground, remain steadfast in your grey rock approach and wait for them to get bored. They'll eventually get fed up and tired of playing this game with you. And they don't want to play with a boring toy, so be just that. Don't be their entertainment. Be their least favourite pastime. The grey rock method does have two downsides. And they are, don't use it in the wrong circumstances. So obviously you're not going to use that when you have no contact with them at all. Of course you're not going to use it because you, if you've got no contact at all, that's, that's fine. And the second part of it is, you know, don't use this approach and let it creep into other parts of your life and other relationships. You don't want to live the rest of your life at a distance from other people just because you must take that approach with a narcissist. So as I said, I will be putting um, a vlog on, on the malignant narcissist in more detail. So until next time.